Hello and welcome back to Pentiment, a medieval narrative adventure game. I am getting close to the end of Act 3, and this time I'm playing as Magdalene Druckerin, the printer's daughter, rather than Andreas Mailer. In the previous episode, I explored the ruins of Kersai Abbey, discovered some recent additions to the Dance of Death mural in the Chapter House, and saw a shadowy figure following me again. Father Thomas told me the origin of the town's Church of the Labyrinth, any city was too busy to help me translate the Latin history book. I also accused him of gossip and meddling after he and Mother Francisca conspired to make me join the convent because they disapproved of my artistic pursuits. Kraft discussed his future with me, and I failed to convince him to pursue an apprenticeship with a master stonemason. Then I decided to paint the town's saints in the third section of the Rat House mural, Asked Dr. Stoles if he'd ever seen anyone lurking around the Abbey ruins. Wrote letters to former Archdeacon Jacob Estler and my friend Esther. And received a reply from Jacob, who was no longer an Archdeacon, but had become a Lutheran. A mysterious purple ink warning was left on my bed, but before I could talk to my dad about it, we were interrupted by Utz delivering firewood. I talked to Utz about the mural the Baron's murder and his father Otto's death, but Utz uh, just accused me of being weird and called me Mags again. It is now Christmas Eve and I need to figure out what to paint in the last section of the Rat House mural. Let's see what happens next in Pentiment. What I need to do is wander around town and speak with everyone who was alive during the revolt, particularly people who were adults during the revolt or what they're calling the revolt. I didn't think it was much of a revolt the way I had played through the game, but, you know, the, the peasant uprising, the peasant unrest. It says I should talk to Agnes, Clara, and go to the Golden Hand, talk to some people there. All right, well, let's just make the rounds around the village and see who we can talk to. How about Black Till? He has nothing to say. Eva. All right, Eva was married to Otto, who was murdered in Act 2. Hello, Eva. Magda, darling. Utz isn't here, I'm afraid. That's all right. I can find him later if I need to. I won't need to. Oh, uh, all right. I wasn't looking for him. Yeah, I'll say I wasn't looking for him. No, are you sure? I think he wandered off toward the rat house. Something about the council, but if you ask me, I think he's looking for you. That's sweet of him. He has been dropping by the rat house more often as of late. I'm sorry to disappoint him. Doesn't he do any real work? Uh, I'm not sorry to disappoint him. I'm not going to say it's sweet of him. I don't want to encourage him or his mother. I'll say, doesn't he do any real work? Oh, yes. He's always working on town council business these days, and he's still working at mastering carpentry, too. I suggested a few years ago that he take up an apprenticeship, but he was determined to remain in Tassing. I think he's more comfortable here, even if that means he'll never be the craftsman Otto was. I help him how I can, but there's only so much I know how to do. Besides, I think he feels like he's taking care of me instead of the other way around. Funny how time does that. It's good of him to stay. I would worry that you'd be lonely otherwise. I think Dad misses Mom even after all these years. Do you ever miss Otto? I would jump at the chance to leave Tassing if it didn't mean Dad would be left alone. I imagine Utz feels the same. I'm not going to imagine he feels anything. Uh, I think I'll say that my dad misses my mom. Do you ever miss Otto? I mean, I came in here to talk to her about the peasant uprising. Every day. And her husband was the one that got murdered. And her father was the one who burned down the abbey after that happened. So... Uh, I see him in the little things. Utz does. The way he smiles or how he laughs. I miss my husband, but I'm proud of Utz. He's growing into a capable young man. 
I'm excited to see him grow into a husband and father. He'll make a wonderful partner. Yeah, stop. You didn't teach him any respect. He keeps calling me Mags, even after I've asked him not to a million times. Whoever he marries will be a lucky woman. If he ever grows up, that is. He still acts like a boy half the time. Yeah, I'll say that. Oh, that's the way of men. The Lord gave them lofty spirits that need to exert themselves. Yeah, okay, whatever. Give it time, Magdalene. You'll see. All men are tempered by marriage. Yeah, if you say so. <laughs> right. Anyway, I'm sure you have things to do. I'll let you get back to them. Always good to see you, Magda. You too, Eva. Well, that's not what I came in here to talk to her about. I came in here to talk to her about the uprising. And she's got nothing to say about that, really? Ugh. That's a waste of my time. Who else can I talk to? Oh, the blacksmith's not out here. And his house is not open to me. How about the bakery? Oh, there's no one in here. Where is everybody? Are they all at the Golden Hand Inn? Getting ready for the festival? Oh, nope. Who have we got in here? Veronica, Brigitte, and Agnes. Oh. If I had to marry into any family in this village, I think I'd like to marry into this one. Honestly, I really love Agnes. <laughs> and Kraft seems like a decent guy. Magdalene Druckerin. I didn't expect to see you today. How is your father? He's not well, honestly. He... I'm sorry, I'd rather not talk about it today. He's doing better if I lie. I don't want to lie. Why would I lie? I'll say he's not well, honestly. Oh no, I'm so sorry. He'll be in our prayers tonight. Ours as well. Now then, is there something we can help you with, dear? I have a small favor to ask. Agnes, you're old. <laughs> you remember things that happened in this town, right? I'm not going to I'm not going to lead with that. I have a small favor. Oh, go on then, spit it out. If it isn't too much trouble, I'd like you all to recount what you remember of the revolt. I'm nearly done with my mural, but I need more details. I was so young, I don't remember much of that night. Oh, for that project of yours in the rat house. I'm afraid I won't have much good to say about the matter, but all right. Come sit down, Magdalene. Don't worry about helping with the wreaths. It took me years to get the technique up to Mom's expectations, so you're better off not helping. Ta, you always did fine, Brigitte. So, Magdalene... What do you need to know to finish the mural? I was hoping to ask you more about the revolt. All I can remember was the flames when the abbey burned. What part of the revolt? The abbot starving us out of house and home? Otto's murder? I doubt that would be a good painting. I thought the abbot of Kearsaw was acting in his rights. It seems like the abbot at Kearsaw wasn't on very good terms with Tassing. I thought there was an attempt to talk to the abbot. Yeah, I'll say that I thought there was an attempt to talk to the abbot. There was, until Otto was killed. After that, the monks shut themselves up in the abbey library. Meanwhile, that bastard abbot only ever cared for how many fennigs he could get from us. Well, now, the whole story was that Brother Guy was embezzling a whole bunch of money. Like, seriously, like a fortune from the abbey and so the abbot thought the abbey didn't have any money and also the reason they locked themselves up in the library was because everyone thought the abbot had murdered Otto. Brigitte don't forget to twist the ends in can't have it looking like a Christmas hedgehog. I'm getting there mom I've looked after Martin and Kraft well enough haven't I I can manage this. Yes, well, after your father died, I've got no one left to nag besides you and that husband of yours. Thank God I have the both of you. As a matter of fact, let an old woman have her vices. The Gertner house was a bit sad. Jorg always gets quiet this time of year. Whatever for. But it's Christmas. Yeah, I'll say whatever for. Why does he get sad? 
I reckon because that family has been hard-pressed since Peter died. Past things lost a good number of folk over the years, and feast days and celebrations make it harder to bear. You mean the revolt, right? Um, what? I mean the revolt. Oh, did, does she mean that they were lost in the revolt? Is that what that means? The revolt, the murders, that fool Andreas had to meddle in everything. Didn't do too much good if you ask me. Andreas Mailer, the artist? I thought he was my dad's friend. You mean Master Mailer? Dad said that none of that was his fault. Dad said that Master Mailer made some mistakes, but that he was seeking justice for everyone in town. Yeah, I'll say that. And I think your father is right in that. And yet... He'd already meddled enough in Tasting after the Baron's murder that he held more sway than he knew. Yeah, well, you should thank Andreas Mailer that he didn't turn your husband Lucky in as one of the suspects for the Baron's murder, because, you know, he really did seem like a suspect, possibly the actual murderer. But he was such a good guy and so well-liked and needed around town that I didn't turn him in. I could understand it the first time. He wanted to save that old monk. I dare say he saw him as a father. But poor old Attilia was killed for the crime. She might have done it too, but she was close to her end anyway. Yeah, I didn't like the fact that they executed Attilia. Attilia was not actually the one that I gave up to them as my choice for the murderer. I told them I thought it was Brother Farink. But they executed Attilia anyway, so I kind of feel bummed about that because I really did not think she did it. Well, no one in town liked her. It's no wonder she was accused of murdering that stupid Baron. Then came the revolt, and Andreas Mailer happened to show up nearly the day of Otto's murder. Did the revolt accomplish anything? Dad always says the townsfolk didn't stand with the peasants as long as they should have. I always heard that night was a slaughter. Why didn't anyone stop the peasants? What do you mean, stop the peasants? They burned down the mill because that's where brother Guy had taken refuge. And then the stupid miller, Lenhart, had shot the baker. So they burnt the mill down. But that's the only slaughter they did. Uh... I'll say, did the revolt accomplish anything? Well, the entire matter was a horrible, bloody mess, but did restore peace in Tassing by force. Well, just because the Duke's troops showed up, they're the ones that came in and slaughtered everyone. A shame it had to happen at all, I think. I knew the revolt was a bad idea from the start. Old Voislav would be the only one to know what happened inside the old church now, before the fire. Some like to say things were always this bad, that violence was the only way, but it wasn't. Life got worse over the years. It wasn't like this when I was a child, not in my grandparents' time, either. Sure, the abbot was pinching the townsfolk and the peasants were suffering, but to go against the church? Yeah, but in the end... Oh my gosh, I've said this before... At the end of my playthrough of Act 2, the only person who was still against the church was Peter. Everyone else had calmed down, and they didn't storm the church, they stormed the mill. And when they went to the church, it was to let the abbot out. I don't know, it's just weird, because I didn't choose any of the selections that were like, ooh, gung-ho, anti-church, burn it to the ground, you know, like, I, I didn't play it that way, and yet everyone's talking as if, as if I did. But like you said, things weren't always so bad. We fought to make things right. But things got better in the end, right? Even if so many people died. Well, the revolt didn't totally fail, did it? The abbot and the monks have left. It doesn't seem like things have gotten much better. Uh, I don't know. They seem better to me. Everybody seems a lot happier. They're not all starving to death. I'll say the revolt didn't totally fail. The abbots and the monks left. The abbey may be gone, but Tasting has only traded one lord for another. The peasants were so angry over the abbot's perceived injustices, they thought they could make it right with even more injustice. No, that's not at all what happened, but okay. 
Then the abbey caught fire and everyone ran, but by then the soldiers had arrived to stop them all. That soldier even warned Peter, but nothing would stop him besides steel. So nothing got better at all? No, not as I see it. The Lord is just as severe as the abbot was and threatens force at every turn. That's life. You can struggle and die to accomplish something and nothing changes. Huh. The dead are luckier. They died believing they changed something. We're stuck with the harsh reality. This is all you've known, Magdalene. You've grown used to it. We all have. Thank you for sharing your story with me. Oh, I see. Well, how are things worse than they were before? I mean, I know at the beginning of Act 1, they were talking about how they couldn't graze their pigs in the forest anymore. And then by Act 2, they couldn't even gather firewood in the forest anymore or go fishing. And everyone was starving. It seems like things are a lot better now. I mean, they still can't graze their pigs, and they still can't go fishing, I guess, but... Yeah, I, I don't know. Whatever. Um, sure, I see. Like I said, not the best piece for a mural, huh? Well, I want the mural to be as accurate as possible. I might not depict it so gruesomely. I want the mural to be as accurate as possible, I guess? Ugh, then I'm never setting foot in the rat house again. Oh, hush, Veronica. I'm sure Magdalene will paint it beautifully. Good luck, Magdalene. Crafting wreaths. What does it say here in my journal? I helped Agnes, Brigitte, and Veronica make some Christmas wreaths. They viewed the revolt as a failure, especially Agnes. She said it brought peace to Tassing, but that things are much worse now than when she was young. Okay, and we had some time go by. I didn't realize that it would take up a bunch of my time. That was kind of useless. Let's see what's up here. Can I get into the doctor's house? Yes, but he's not here. What about Baltus? Oh, there's all of his beer he's been working on. Oh, if it isn't Mistress Magdalene. Hello, Baltus. Hello, Ignacio. How are your inventions coming, Baltus? Oh, very well, thank you. I was just showing Ignacio how our rat house clock works on one of my smaller prototypes. It is a fascinating process, truly. I had never considered that one man could make something so complex by himself. The clock tower is the wonder of tassing. Well, you do have to account for Endress's help in smithing the parts and us is building the framework to hold it too. I bet there are one or two women who could make a fine clock if given a chance. I'd love to create something so intricate one day. Maybe a new kind of printing press. Oh, that's cool. That's from my tinkering background. I'll say that. Now, what kind of printing press would that be, pray tell? Maybe something with automatically sorted type. That would make the process faster. I don't know yet, but I'm sure I can come up with something. How about maybe something with automatically sorted type? Haha, you may be onto something there, Magda. Can you imagine? Automatic type. Truly an ingenious idea if one could ever make it happen. The ideas are still fuzzy, but I think I can make it work someday. Stranger things have been attempted. It is a bit ridiculous, I admit. And I'll say that I can make it work someday. Well, I shall look forward to your debut, mistress. In the meantime, shall we get back to work, Baltus? Hmm? Oh, yes, of course. Please excuse us, Magdalene. We're rather busy at the moment. Until later. We're busy just standing there gazing longingly into each other's eyes. Is that what you're busy doing? All right. Where else can we go and talk to people who may have been alive during Act 2?
Nope, the kids are out here playing with snowballs. Let's talk to Elsa. I mean, she's the one whose husband killed the baker and I assume got burned up in his mill. Oh, and she's got nothing to say about it. What about Anna? God bless you, Magdalene. Hello, Anna. How are you? Oh, keeping busy. There's always plenty to do around the house. How is the mural coming? Paul mentioned your progress is quite impressive. Oh, I'll have to thank him. That's high praise from a councilman. I'm making steady progress. I think I'll be finished just before the new year. I didn't realize the council cared so much, especially since I wasn't their first choice. I'll just say I'm making steady progress. Oh, how wonderful. I'll have to bring Andreas and Ulrika by some time to see your progress. We won't get in your way, of course. I'm sure they'd love to learn about the process. You're all more than welcome, but watch your step. There's plaster everywhere. I've just mixed a new batch to keep the wall moist. It's hard to maintain the right texture when it's so cold out. Oh, I can imagine. I had a similar problem when I helped my mother in the bakery. Rolling dough in winter was such trouble. We had to throw out so many batches that wouldn't rise. Your discipline is admirable, Magdalene. You know, I was a real rascal back in the day. Skipped on working with my parents more times than I can count. But you're so hardworking, Anna. I can't imagine you making trouble. So it wasn't Big Yorg who was the troublemaker? I'll say you're so hardworking. I can't imagine you making trouble. It is funny to consider, isn't it? I was a thief and a scoundrel. It started with cakes from my mother's table, still hot from the oven. Soon it was silverware, mugs, trinkets I found all around town. Of course, stealing is against the Lord's commandments. So my father would make me return everything if I hadn't eaten it already and marched me to church to pray. Father Thomas grew accustomed to seeing me more often than Sunday mornings. What changed? I guess you got tired of saying Ave Maria's. What changed? I grew out of the habit over time. I think I started to see why my parents had such devotion to the Lord. Stealing was my way of acting out. But when the troubles started in town, I realized that my thieving wasn't doing any good. I decided I'd rather honor my father and mother as God commands. It gives me grace with Andreas and Ulrika on the hard days, and with the rest of the town, too. I think Ulrik would be proud. I think everyone can learn from your example. That's more charitable than some people in Tassing deserve. I'll say Elric would be proud. Thank you, Magdalene. That means more than you know. Well, I won't keep you any longer. I'm sure you have plenty of mural work to do. I'll see you later, Anna. God bless you, Magdalene. And I guess I can't talk to you about the uprising. And I can't talk to Paul. Okay. What about the outer farms? Anyone out here? Nope. It's pretty though. <laughs> All right, well, let's go in and see who is in the Golden Hand Inn and talk to them. Oh, the musicians are here. Who's upstairs? Killian and Hannah. Hannah's got nothing to say to me. Killian's got nothing to say to me. Hans is here. Wojslav is here. Yuta. Oh, I can't talk to Matilda. Is that her name? Can't talk to... I think his name was Simon. And I can't go back outside. They've got it closed off here with a curtain. Okay, well, I'm going to talk to Wojslav because he was living in the Abbey. He was one of the monks at the time of the revolt. God bless you, Magdalene. Hello, Wojslav. I have an odd question for you. Oh? When I was exploring the Abbey for the mural background, I stumbled upon some stray cats. Were there a lot of cats during your time? Ah, ha, ha. Yes, as a matter of fact, there were. 
There were always cats around the abbey, but one summer they started begging for food. Persistent little creatures. Brother Lucas swears he never fed them, but I have my doubts. Well, they seem to have made the abbey their home now. Ah, good for them. At least someone is making use of that old structure. Thank you for telling me, Magdalene. Be well, Voislav. God bless you and your father, Magdalene. Okay, but what about the abbey and the revolt, my dude? I'm trying to finish a mural and all he's talking to me about are cats. Okay, that wasn't helpful. What about Hans? Hello, Magdalene. Hello, Hans. Did you need something? Just wanted to see what you were doing. How are you doing? Weren't you alive during the revolt? Can't you tell me more about it? I'm trying to paint a mural. What What game am I playing here? Come on. Uh, how are you doing? Fine enough. Weather's getting colder. And the family? Healthy and hardworking. Simon's taking care of the winter provisions. No, he's not. He's in the corner sweeping. He's a good boy. Proud of him. And you know how beautiful and kind-hearted Yuta is. Just like her mother. I don't know how I got so lucky. She's a miracle. She will marry a good man soon, I'm sure. There aren't too many options in tasking, though. <laughs> Do you have someone in mind? I'll say that. That young us is a good man, I've noticed. Yeah, except that he'll probably call her yut yut or some stupid thing, no matter what she says. He's solid enough. I'm not so sure about him. His eye seems to wander. Putz, really? He's a fool. Yeah, I'm going to say that. Because he really is. Maybe he acts like a boy sometimes, but he's on the town council. That says a lot about his character. All the same, when Yuta has children one day, they'll be beautiful and kind, like their mother. There are worse things to be, I guess. I did my best to raise her right, but her best qualities are all Heilwig. Give yourself a little credit, Hans. I miss her. I don't even know who she is, so... <laughs> I'll just say give yourself some credit. Kind of you to say, Magdalene. I should, uh, I should get back to it. Until later. Until then. Okay. Uh, and the only other person I could talk to in here is Yuta. So I guess I'll talk to her. Was she alive during the revolt? Oh, now Helen's is talking to me again for some reason. Uh, hello, Magdalene. Yuta says, hello, Magdalene. How's the weather? We've been prepping for the feast in here all day. Fresh and brisk. Perfect for a walk. Colder than usual. I'm glad to be indoors now. Too damn cold. It's like this winter will never end. Uh, I will say fresh and brisk. Perfect for a walk. Because I do like cold weather. Simon says, Ugh, better you than me. I'll stay in here where I can keep my fingers warm. You'd better keep your fingers out of my dough, Master Bauer. Says Matilda. Simon says, I didn't do anything. You've snuck your little fingers into my cookie dough three times today. Do it again and I'll wrap your knuckles with the back of my spoon. Don't anger Mistress Matilda, Simon. Yes, sir. Sorry, Mistress Matilda. We need enough dough to make cookies for the entire town. You can't be eating it all. Anyway, what did you come in for, Magdalene? I was hoping you could tell me what you remember of the revolt. I was too young to remember much of it. No one ever seems to talk about it, and Mistress Matilda and Master Voislav, you two are the only ones left who used to live in the Abbey. The only ones who stayed, anyway. Matilda and I had been friendly enough with the people in town. We put it behind us in time. You can imagine the other brothers had little reason to remain. Old Idoc made it out. I think Father Grenoble paid for him to go back to an Abbey in Cornwall. Oh, good... He was sick, and I think he was starting to have a heart attack or chest pains or something, and I had to get medicine for him in Act 2. Ferenc joined the Dominicans and became an Inquisitor. Oh, Jesus. Ferenc was the one that was doing black magic, and who I thought had killed the Baron in Act 1. I've seen him around these parts over the years. Time has turned him friendly enough, considering his vocation. I'm not sure what happened to the others. All gone in any case. But the whole thing is a sensitive subject, Magdalene. Why are you asking? 
I want to honor everyone who fought in the revolt in the Rat House mural. I want to portray the event truthfully in the mural, so I'm trying to hear everyone's account of events. I talked to some others in town, but all the stories seem to conflict. I want to hear your perspective so I can paint the mural. Yeah, I'll say that. There was so much going on that night. No wonder everyone remembers it differently. Wait, Magdalene, here. Come cut out cookies with me first. That way we don't fall behind while we chat. We'd be grateful for the help. All right, Magdalene, cut out cookies from the dough and set them aside so Simon can put them on a tray. We'll need a good number in a variety of shapes, so don't hesitate to change which cutter you use. We have to have enough for the whole town, after all. Well, how much is enough for the whole town? Select. All right, those are our cookie cutters. And how do we rotate them? Okay, now I can rotate with the left joystick. Okay. I'm going to try to get as many as I can out of this. All right, I think that's all I can do. How many did I get? 28? Is that 28? Well, I hope that's enough. Yuta says, are you done? These look wonderful. Thank you. You can make more if you want, but it looks like we have enough. Let me try again. I think that's good for now. No, I think that's good for now. Thanks for helping, Magdalene. Voislav says, we'd better keep going if we're going to have everything ready by the procession tonight. So what can we tell you, Mags? Simon, don't call me Mags. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now he's starting it up. I heard the Land Connects came into town before the revolt and warned everyone to leave the Abbey alone. Could things really have been talked out or was it too late by then? Why didn't anybody listen? They were trained soldiers and they killed so many people. Did the abbot really think threatening you would work? Yeah, why didn't anybody listen? They were trained soldiers and they killed so many people. Hans says, oh, some people did. Your father, for one. He left the peasants' cause after that. He's never forgiven himself for that. That's why I'm making the mural. But it was a lost cause. He's never forgiven himself. Is that true? I can't think of anything else he has said that would indicate that's true. But I guess I'll say it. Yuta says that won't bring any of them back, though, will it? Well, I mean, there wasn't anything he could do at the time that would have prevented them from dying either. So, you know. Enough, Yuta. It's not Magdalene or Claus's fault the revolt turned out so poorly. There were some people who wanted to talk. Master Mailer worked hard to keep the peace, but after Otto was killed... Oh, Andreas, a shame how he died. We at the monastery were fond of him. Dad said he was instrumental in keeping the revolt from getting out of hand. He regrets not standing by him. Yes, he was. He had a personal dinner with the abbot to try to discuss things, I believe. A pity they couldn't come to an agreement. Yes, Andreas did a lot of good for Tasting, and Kirsaw too. Even if the old abbot failed to admit that. He even revealed corruption in our own midst. The old prior, Ferenc, had been doing witchcraft in the church. I still grieve that he died in the abbey fire. I know your father does too, Magdalene. But wasn't the revolt in general justified? Would it have been best to leave the matter alone? It sounds like no one should have opposed the Abbey at all. Yeah, I'll say, but wasn't the revolt in general justified? Hans says, yes, I think so. We couldn't even collect in the forest without a fee. Dad kept saying we couldn't live with higher and higher taxes. 
The night Otto died, the abbot was trying to excommunicate everyone just for celebrating St. John's Eve. A lot of people thought the abbot killed him in revenge. Turns out it was Brother Guy. He was embezzling funds from the abbey. Still, after Otto and Ulrich, that was too much. We burned the mill with both bastards inside. The abbot promised to help if Andreas found the person who killed Otto. All we wanted was to talk. But didn't you say you just burned down the mill? But the abbot ordered the land connects to stop you. You mean no one was supposed to burn the abbey down? Yeah, that's what I've been saying all along. The only person who burned the abbey down was Peter. Why would anyone want that? We sought justice, not murder. It was too much for Peter. Lenhard was one thing. He had just killed Ulrich, but to burn the abbey... But when the Lankinex saw the fire, they thought they had another revolt on their hands. Aha! All right, now it all becomes clear. Even Father Grineau couldn't stop them. We all fled. Brother Florian saved as many as he could, but... But, oh no, that's how we lost Brother Florian? I really liked Brother Florian. He had been a mercenary, so he probably had a lot of experience fighting, defending, trying to, you know, protect people as they fled. Peter was wrong to burn the abbey, but what the soldiers did, that was awful. Yeah, I agree 100% with that, Yuda. Dad died protecting me, stabbed in the chest. I don't even remember what he was wearing, but I remember how dark the blood was when we found him. Almost black and sticky, like treacle. Dad socked one of the soldiers in the face, but another was right there, and... Uh, Magdalene, can we stop talking about this? Of course, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset anyone. Yes, thank you for talking to me. I'll do my best on the mural. All right. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll then I'll just say thanks for talking to me. Good luck. We'll see you at the procession later. Until then. Cookie cutter. I helped the folks at the Golden Hand with making cookies for the festivities later. We also talked about some of the monks and nuns from Curacao and what happened to them. And there's the cookies. Okay, so what do I need to do now? Does the map show me where to go next? It says to go down to the Gertner Farm. Okay, I guess I have to talk to Clara. She was Peter's wife. I haven't found Gret anywhere either. She was Ulrich's wife. I'd like to talk to her about what happened. Can I talk to the musicians? Oh, yep. Casimir's isn't speaking. He's just writing. That's what he did before. At least he spelled my full name out and didn't just say Mags. Hello again, Casimir's. How are you finding Tastings Winter? How have your performances gone? I'll say, how are the performances? Well, people like our music. Are you looking forward to the Christmas feast? Are you looking forward to going home when the pass is clear? I'll say you're looking forward to the Christmas feast. Yes. <laughs> okay. Alexander is upset about missing the competition, but it will be nice to perform for a large crowd. I'm sure everyone will love it. It's not often we get musicians of your skill in tassing. I look forward to hearing you. Yeah, I'll say it's not often we get musicians of your skill. Can I talk to Alexander as well? Well, if it isn't Magdalene, that's me. You're learning everyone's names during your stay? I'll just say that's me. Ah, oh, good. It's been a while since we've spoken. How are you finding tassing? Everyone has been quite kind, and no one has thrown anything at me for my music. Considering the circumstances, I'm counting that as a success. I have to admit, I was quite upset that I had missed my opportunity to sing at the Meister Singer competition. He practiced so much for it. Yes, it's hard not to view the last year as a waste. You can try again next Christmas, can't you? Really? The whole year's a waste? 
Yeah, the whole year's a waste? What does that mean? Huh, it seems like it. I don't know. Maybe I'll view it differently someday. I felt like everything was building up to this one performance, and now it's not going to happen. Well, you have an audience here, the people of Tassing. Is winning one contest really so important? Well, it's the Meistersinger contest. I mean, that was a big deal back then. I'll say you have an audience here in Tassing. And perform for them, I will. I love performing for people wherever I go. When I sing for people, I want to move them. I want to see it on their faces. It's only in that moment that I can connect with them. That's the only truth I know. Meister singer judges will rate me as they will, but that's not why I want to perform for them. I want to move the masters the way they moved me. Does that make sense? I think so. My dad is my teacher, and his approval means a lot to me. I'm not sure. I never really thought about it. Making art is just what I do to help my dad. I suppose I make art for my own satisfaction. Now, say my dad is my teacher, and his approval means a lot to me. I think we all want the approval of those who came before us. And someday someone will look to me for approval. Hard to imagine. Huh, I'm sorry, just feeling a bit melancholy, I suppose. It's the long nights. Cheer up, Christmas is here. I'll say it's the long nights. I suppose you're right. All that darkness. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> Perhaps the Christmas feast will lift my spirits. Will I see you there? Absolutely. Almost everyone in town should be there. Then I look forward to it. Until then. Oh, I hope we get to hear them perform. That'll be fun. Alright, let's head down. Oh, let's see if we can go into the forest. Oh, look, it's Smokey and Vaxlov. They're not back there in the woods in their huts and stuff, in their tents. Hello, Magdalene. Vaxlov says, hello again, Magdalene. Are you getting ready for the Christmas celebrations? Of course, along with everyone else in town. Not really. I have other things I'm trying to take care of. Yeah, I'll say that because it's true. I'm trying to do the mural. You are quite a busy young woman. Smokey told me your father was injured. How is he? I think he's going to be all right. It will just take time. I don't know, Backslav. He's not doing well. I'll be honest. I don't think he's doing well. I'm sorry. I will hope for the best. Well, I don't want to keep you from your tasks. I'll see you later then. Merry Christmas, Backslav. Backslav, do you want to come to the Christmas feast? Yeah, and Smokey too. Come on. Ha, kind of you to offer. My beliefs and my, well, how I look. It's best I stay out here. I'll be fine, but thank you. I'll see you later then. Merry Christmas, Vaxlov. Merry Christmas. Aww. It's a bummer that they have to stay out here in the forest. Oh, look at the shrine in the snow. Oh, I like that. I do. I really like that. That's nice. Let's see what the waterfall looks like. Oh, look at the waterfall in the snow. Oh, and I can't go to the mine. Can I go out? To the church? I want to see the abbey in the snow. <gasps> the upper abbey is too snowed in. Oh. I won't be able to visit the poor Claire's for a while. Oh, bummer. All right, let's go down here. I can't get into Martin Bauer's house. Well, Martin Bauer and Brigitte. All right, we know that Hans Bauer is up at the Golden Hand Inn.
Looks like Big York is here. Gret, Clara, and Ursula are all in here. Ooh, they're working on some kind of masks or costumes or something. Big York says, hello, Magdalene. Gret says, bless you, Magdalene. All right, Clara's got the full conversation option. Hello, Magdalene. I would have thought you'd be working on the mural today. What brings you here? I would like sit with you and I I would like sit with you. <laughs> uh, another typo. I would like to sit with you and ask how you remember the rebellion so that I can paint it, if that's all right. Uh, that was a sad time. If it will help you memorialize those we lost in the revolt, yes, I'll answer a few questions. Ursula says, I don't mind. I was a little older than you, so I probably remember more, Magdalene. Gret says, of course, Magdalene. We'll tell you all you want to know. I've been looking forward to seeing the mural for some months. Come now, sit with us. I guess I'm going to help them work on their little masks here. Now that you're all settled, what did you want to know? Did the revolt have anything to do with the other murder that happened in Tassing? Oh, the murder of the Baron, you mean? No, not really. I only remember that Andreas attempted to be a peacekeeper in both situations. I suppose that's when things started going poorly. What, because Andreas stepped in to be peacekeeper? I think they went poorly because your husband burnt down the abbey. Oh, old Atilia. Yes, yeah, she hated the abbey and the baron. It was still a shock to know she could have killed the baron, though. I don't think she did. It was really only after the baron's murder the abbot became so severe. No doubt he blamed the rebellion and faithlessness of people in Tassing. I don't know about any of that, but his taxes and restrictions and his attitude toward us became harsher after that. It was all we could do to live by them, but it eventually became too much. Even with all the restrictions, was the revolt really justified? I keep hearing conflicting stories about how it began. I know things were bad for the peasants, but was it worth all the loss? I thought the peasants stormed the abbey unprovoked and the lands connects had to be called in. Agnes blamed Andreas for starting the revolt. Is that really true? Uh, yeah, I'm curious about this Agnes blaming Andreas for starting the revolt. Andreas only ever sought peace, from what I remember. He took it upon himself to try and keep justice in Tassing, even though it wasn't his home. Truly, it's thanks to him that we had peace for so long. We did everything we could to keep things from getting violent, but the Lord had other plans. Yeah, great, you know what? That is exactly how I remember it, too. I remember how sick and hungry I was all the time. Grandpa kept saying it hadn't always been like that. All was fine until one of the brothers killed Otto in retaliation for finding out just how corrupt the Abbey was. Well, my husband wouldn't let that rest. We all wanted justice. When that soldier arrived and threatened us, all the townsfolk pulled away except for you and Ulrich, Gret. No, Clara, I'm afraid even I was intimidated and begged Ulrich to leave the matter be. My husband alone stood with the peasants, and he died for it. Why did all the peasants revolt anyway? So many people died, they must have known it wouldn't succeed. Dad always talks about how he regrets that choice, that's why he wanted to paint the mural. Could the revolt have succeeded if the townsfolk didn't pull away? I'm curious what they'll say if I ask, why did all the peasants revolt? Gret says, Father Gonneau was a harsh lord. His rules and taxes left many of the families starving. By then, we were so starved and wanted justice so much, Peter truly thought success was possible. There was still some discussion. Ulrich and Andreas wanted peace. Then that fucking miller protected that tonsured bastard, he always hated us, thought he was better than us. Ursula, language. What, Mom, it's true. Lenhart even shot Ulrich out of nowhere. 
It was unprovoked. People don't just shoot one another without cause. I don't know about all that. Uh, I'll say it was unprovoked. Yes, Lenhart always did hate the rest of the townsfolk, and he would take advantage of anyone he could. My husband sought peace to the last. He was a martyr to us. I think the miller shot Ulrich to retaliate, but after that, Peter couldn't be stopped. We'd lost too much. The burning of the abbey was a grim night, and the soldiers coming in. Our men fought to protect us, to protect Tassing, and many died in that fight. But we got rid of the abbot and all the monks, at least. Yes, and that is some comfort, if only a little. Are there any heroes of Tasting I should memorialize? Dad, definitely. Peter always wanted the best for Tasting, even if he acted rashly by setting fire to the abbey. I hope you can portray him in the best light, Magdalene. I'd rather not talk about that night anymore. I hope we provided enough insight for your work. You did. Thank you. I'll let you get back to work. I won't ask anything further. Uh, I guess I can work with what you said. I'll say uh, thank you. I'll let you get back to work. Thank you, Magdalene. I'm certain the mural will be beautiful. Ooh, it's starting to get late now. It's placed me right outside the house. And we have some new entries in our journal. Let's check them out. I sat with Clara, Ursula, and Gret and helped them prepare costumes for the Perktenlauf tonight. They had a lot of bad memories from the revolt. It's not surprising since Clara's husband led it and was killed after he set fire to the abbey. That's enough work for Christmas Eve. They'll be running the Perktenlauf soon. Time to head over to the commons so we can all shiver together. But we will head to the commons in the next episode. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Pentiment. It's especially fun for me right now because it is December and so it's all Christmassy around me in the real world. And then we're playing through Christmas time in the game as well. So that's been a lot of fun. Leave a comment, leave a like, do all those things to let me know you're there. Let me know you care. And a very special thanks to those of you who go above and beyond and do the YouTube channel memberships and the super thanks. Every little bit helps and I really, really appreciate it. Don't forget, you can still enter the Lance Connect card game giveaway. I will be giving away a deck of cards, official Xbox merchandise that look just like the cards in the game that I played in Act 2. If you want one of those, check out the description for more information. And there's also a video about it on my YouTube channel. Take care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye!